And the 12 points go to... Ja, ja, denk on! Play it! Hey folks, welcome to another episode of... Then we add... <gasps> to your vision. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Ben, I'm a musician and composer and I'm doing reaction videos for the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and ding that notification bell if you want to get notified the next time I upload one of these videos. If you want to support this channel further, I would appreciate if you would buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash bencristina. There is a link in the description box below. Today I'm going to react to the grand final of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. I will go through each and every country, I will rate each and every country, there will be a list on the right side of your screen, and I will be rating by vocal performance, staging and the song as a live performance overall. So without any further ado, let's dive into it, let's do this. First up, the United Kingdom. Poor James, my heart goes out to you. Zero points from the audience and zero points from the jury is not what you would have deserved on this evening. Was the performance awesome? Not necessarily. Was the staging awesome? Not necessarily. Was the song overall awesome? Not necessarily. But it was definitely better than zero points. I will not go into the politics of this rating, but we all know what's going on here. So let me share my ratings as a musician. Vocally, I would give James 2 out of 5 points. His singing wasn't bad. It could have been better and every once in a while he didn't hit the notes as he wanted to. But overall, it's an okay rating. With regards to the staging, again, 2 out of 5 possible points. The hanging down trumpets were okay. The graphics in the background were okay. Again, it was nothing outstanding, but it was solid. When it comes to the actual song performance, overall I would like to give this a 3 out of 5. Because it's a party song. You can't be in the audience, the song is playing and you're just sitting there and waiting until it's over. Because let's be honest, it's a banger. You can dance to it and you will have a good time. Next up, Germany. Before I start talking about Germany, I would like to draw your attention to this. Um, so I'm not sure in which category this song will fit, if it will fit more in the quite high position or if it will just go away with together with the UK hand in hand into the dumpster and yeah that's it. It looks like I was right. Even Germany received zero points from the audience but at least they received some courtesy points from some of the jurors in Europe. The performance itself was quirky, it was actually quite fun to watch but I understand that the audience did not necessarily get warm with it. And German humor can be a bit tricky outside of Germany. So my ratings. Vocally, Jendrik, 2 points out of possible 5. Again here, it was okay, but he wasn't on point all the time. With regards to staging, I would like to give Germany 3 out of 5 points. The graphics were nice, the little finger action was nice, the dance routine was quirky and fun. Again, it wasn't mind-blowing or anything, but it deserved a solid 3 out of 5 points. The song overall I would give a 2 out of 5, since again if you don't understand what's happening on stage you might find it a bit weird. If you do understand what's happening on stage it's actually not that bad. But I think more than 2 points would be unfair to James. Moving on to Spain. This is the third Big Five nation which received 0 points from the audience. As I mentioned in my initial reaction video, you can find a playlist somewhere up there. I actually do like this song. Will I put it on my playlist? No, because it's not really tickling my musical taste buds. But I appreciate the effort and I do appreciate his vocals. Having said that, for the vocal performance during the grand final, I will give Spain a 3 out of 5 possible points. The reason for that, when Blas Canto was singing his high note, he missed. And if this note is the star of your song, you have to nail it. But other than that, his vocal performance was actually really good. When it comes to staging, I would like to give Spain 3 out of 5 possible points. The stage was appropriate towards the song. The song didn't ask for elaborate graphics or anything. He was singing under the moon. Was it a bit cheesy? Yeah, sure, but it's Eurovision at the end of the day. But a 3 out of 5 is well deserved here. The song as a live performance overall, I would like to give a 2. Because it's not really anything which kind of keeps you going. 
Which brings us to the Netherlands. After watching their very colorful and inspiring music video, I overall was a bit disappointed in the stage performance. Vocally, they deserve a solid 4 out of 5 points. The vocals were on point, they sounded interesting to listen to, there was a lot of passion in the voice, it was really good. From a staging perspective though, I have to say I was a bit disappointed. I will give the Netherlands 2 out of 5 possible points. The reason here, the music video is very colorful and it took a while for the Netherlands to bring that color onto the stage. So with the amazing stage which has been built in Rotterdam, I think they could have done a bit more. I was rather disappointed. The song, as a live performance, deserves 3 out of 5 possible points. It kind of gets you going, you can dance to it and it can be actually an enjoyable show. If the staging is right. Hint hint for next year. Next on the list, San Marino. In my opinion, the biggest disappointment of the evening. We had a very experienced singer. We had an A-list musical guest. And we had a very artistic creative director. So I have no idea how the combination of these three items could end up in such a mess. Vocally, San Marino did not deserve more than three out of five possible points. And one of these points actually goes to Flo Rida. Zenhit is such an experienced singer, but there was none of that on stage. Having said that, staging San Marino deserves a solid 4 out of 5, because the staging itself was beautiful. And when you watch the performance without sound, it's actually quite nice. Which brings us to the ratings of the live song. San Marino here deserved a solid 3 out of 5 possible points. Moving on to Albania. After watching her semi-final performance, I was actually glad that Albania qualified for the grand final. Because the performance of that semi-final was actually quite good. Vocally, Albania deserves 4 out of 5 possible points. Angela hit her notes, there was passion in the voice, it was a really, really solid performance. When it comes to staging, hmm, 2 out of 5 possible points. It wasn't exciting enough over time. As I said before, during the semi-final it was actually quite good, especially compared to the other contestants. The song itself as a live performance gets 3 out of 5 possible points from me. Moving on to Azerbaijan. I was a bit shocked and not shocked at the same time that this song actually made it through to the final. Because musically, apart from a few ethnic elements, there's just nothing. Vocally during that night, Effendi deserved 2 out of 5 possible points. And I think her vocal performance was much better during the semi-finals. From a staging perspective, again, 2 out of 5 possible points. It was quite colorful, but overall was a bit boring, so there wasn't a lot of stuff happening, even though I appreciated the effort of the background graphics here. The song overall as a live performance, again, deserves a 2 out of 5 possible points. Why that low? Yeah, because of the song. And actually the two points are only deserved because of the live performance. Moving on to Belgium. Another disappointment of the evening, at least if you believe the audience televote. And again, I can partially understand why the televote was that low, but also I wish it was a bit higher. Vocally, I would like to rate Hooverphonic with 3.5 out of 5 possible points. It was a solid performance, but it wasn't wow. From a staging perspective, I would like to give Belgium a 3 out of 5 possible points. The staging fit the song, but it wasn't very exciting over time. The song itself, in this live scenario, also deserves a 3 out of 5 possible points. This is one of these songs where you would stand in the audience just chillax and waving back and forth, which is great, but again, it's not wow. This is not how you win Eurovision. Which brings us to Norway. Again, it was a surprise for me that this song actually ended up in the grand final. Vocally, just like Belgium, Tix deserves 3.5 out of 5 possible points. He hit his notes, it was a solid performance, it wasn't wow. From a staging perspective, I have to give Norway 1 out of 5 possible points. Please, never ever show us angels again. I have nightmares now. The song itself deserves 2 out of 5 possible points in this live scenario. Moving on to Israel. Here again I had a bit higher expectations after Israel released that revamped version of Set Me Free. Vocally I would like to give Eden 3 out of 5 possible points and that is actually quite generous. A fair amount of notes were actually not where they should have been. 
I will give her that extra point though for her whistling note, because that one was spot on. I would like to rate the staging of Israel again with 3 out of 5 possible points. The staging was solid, the dancing was solid, but again it was nothing which blew me away. The song overall as a live performance once again deserves 3 out of 5 possible points. Because it makes you dance and you can sing the chorus line. Well done to Israel and let's move on to Cyprus. Everybody who watched my reaction video of the semi-finals already knows that I absolutely dislike this song. And that hasn't changed over the grand final. Personally I would have voted Cyprus closer to the bottom than they actually ended up. Vocally, 2 out of 5 possible points. Again, I'm very generous here. Because her singing was all over the place. The staging I would rate a bit higher. 3 out of 5 possible points. If you switch off the music it was at least something interesting to watch. The mirror effect was quite cool. The dancing performance was okay as well, so well deserved 3 out of 5 possible points. The song in this live scenario deserves 2 out of 5 possible points, mainly because the performance, especially the vocal performance was just not there. Moving on to Serbia. Loco Loco made me feel like I watched a performance from 10 years ago. And to me it just felt like a hot mess. Vocally Serbia deserves 2 out of 5 possible points, because the singers itself were okay-ish when they were singing alone, accompanied by the background singers, but when they were singing all together, mess. From a staging perspective, again I will give 2 out of 5 possible points, because my goodness we've seen this stuff before. The most disturbing thing here for me were the hair extensions with the wind machine. This is just like, no, not anymore. This was cool decades ago. The song as a live performance for me was the weakest song of the night. 1 out of 5 possible points. But I'm aware that other people see that differently. Moving on to Sweden. As I mentioned in my initial reaction video, the song is extremely generic and very boring. And I think the audience felt the same way. Vocally I would like to rate Tusse with 4 out of 5 possible points. Let's be honest, vocally this dude is amazing. During the performance he was on point, there was enough passion in his voice to carry the song further than it would have gone without him and he did a really good job. From a staging perspective I will give Sweden very generous 1.5 out of 5 possible points. Because it was just not good enough. It was exactly the same thing we saw on TV, just a bit bigger, but overall it was blah. There was nothing exciting happening on that stage. The overall rating for the song as a live performance on the evening gets 3 out of 5 possible points. The reason here, Tusse's amazing voice and the fact that the song has a very catchy hook line. So I hope Sweden does a bit better next year. Moving on to Moldova. Initially I thought I would rate Moldova as the biggest disappointment of the night, but the bar was already low after watching the performance during the semi-finals. Vocally Natalia gets 1 out of 5 possible points. She was the worst singer of the night. Her pitch was all over the place. She hit anything but the notes she wanted to hit. The only note of the song which was half good was that Yeah, you see it's not difficult to hold it on for 17 seconds. Every half trained choir singer can do exactly the same thing. So stop bragging with this stuff but make sure that you get the rest of it right. The staging again deserves 1 out of 5 possible points. Here the reason is the music video. The music video again was so extremely colorful, there were so many opportunities to bring parts of that music video and of that colorful fun performance of this video on stage. But Moldova failed miserably. And I'm not even talking about that mic drop moment here. The song itself in this live performance from me gets very generous 2 out of 5 possible points. The 2 points mainly because the song itself, if you strip away the singing, is actually quite fun. So Moldova again, you had a huge opportunity here, but you f***ed up. Next on the list, Portugal. Oh boy, that was surprisingly great. And I actually think Portugal would have deserved a few more points from the audience. Vocally, 4 out of 5. Just like the semi-finals it was a very solid performance. 
from a staging perspective, I would like to give Portugal 4.5 out of 5 possible points. As I mentioned before, the staging was the biggest surprise of the semi-final and that carried through to the grand final as well. It was just a pleasure to watch. The song, as a live performance, deserves a solid 3 out of 5 points from me. Portugal, well done. Now, moving on to Bulgaria. Getting up is growing hair or something. Sorry, I still find that song title a bit duh. Anyways, vocally, Victoria deserves a solid 3.5 out of 5 possible points. Again, as I mentioned during my semi-final reaction, I think that vocally she is clashing with her background singers. From a staging perspective, I would like to give Bulgaria a solid 3 out of 5 possible points. While the idea of the staging was actually quite good, it felt a bit stretched and it didn't really go anywhere. I have to give them props though, that the timing with the sand this time was on point. Like Portugal, this song as a live performance deserves 3 out of 5 possible points. It was quite nice to listen to, but that wow moment was missing. Moving on to Greece. To be honest with you, I have no idea how this song ended up in 10th place. Because it's very generic and there are definitely other songs who would have deserved a better position than Greece. Vocally, Stefania deserves 3 out of 5 possible points. It was okay. Meh, but not more. It was just okay. From a staging perspective though, Greece up. 1 out of 5 possible points. That green screen shenanigans was already weird during the semi-finals. But during the grand final it was a hot mess. And why is that? One reason is that before Greece, the UK performed and they used pyrotechnics. Fireworks, as we all know, causes smoke. Smoke is the second biggest enemy of green screen, after wearing green clothes. And this was so predictable. My goodness, there is a reason why green screen usually is not used in live music performances. There are just too many factors which can f*** up that performance. My goodness, somebody with a laser pointer could have f***ed up that performance. So Greece, no. The song overall in this live scenario gets 2 out of 5 possible points. Obviously a lot of points are being lost because of that fucked up staging, but then again it's not really a song to enjoy live. It's good for the radio though. Anyways, moving on to Russia. I personally am very happy that Russia ended up in the top 10 of this Eurovision Grand Final. The performance itself was solid, the message was clear and Manija overall did a great job. Vocally, I would like to give her 3 out of 5 possible points, because I know that her vocal performance in the semi-final was better than the vocal performance in the grand final. It might be excitement, she was out of breath a couple of times, it could have been a bit better, but she deserves a solid 3 out of 5 points. When it comes to staging, Russia 4.5 out of 5 possible points. As I mentioned in my reaction video about the first semi-final, this staging is amazing. The graphics are amazing, the simplicity of the five performers standing in a circle was amazing, that dress was amazing. Well deserved 4.5 out of 5 possible points here. When it comes to the overall song rating in this live scenario, Russia 4 out of 5 possible points. It is a banger, it makes you want to jump, it makes you want to rap even though you can't speak Russian. It's an amazing live performance song. So, well done and a well deserved spot in the top 10 of this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Next on the list, Lithuania. This performance wasn't very surprising, because we've seen this obviously before in the semi finals and even during their national selection. But I have to give it to them, the quality got higher and higher and higher during every single performance. Vocally, they deserve a solid. 4 out of 5 possible points. Singing straight notes whilst dancing and running around is always good. And here singers and background singers were blending in beautifully. The staging again deserves 4 out of 5 possible points. It was very colorful, there was a lot of stuff happening. The contrast between purple and yellow worked really well. And folks, that dance, I mean. The song as a live performance deserves a more than solid 4.5 out of 5 possible points. This is just a banger. It makes you dance, it makes you sing and the audience can copy all these crazy moves which are happening on stage. So Lithuania, well done, well deserved spot in the top 10. Which brings us to Malta. Ah, when these audience points were announced. 
that hurt. But I understand where they are coming from. I will upload a video solely about Malta's performance in this competition very soon. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you want to get notified as soon as this video is uploaded. Yeah, 47 points. Vocally, Destiny deserves a very solid 4.5 out of 5 possible points. There were only two parts in her performance which weren't 100%. Her high note was perfect. The leading note to the high note was off. And after she successfully managed to nail that high note, her performance started falling a bit flat. But that's the only thing I could hear which was not perfect during her performance. Which brings us to staging. Always a big downfall and huge disappointment when it comes to Maltese entries to the Eurovision Song Contest. And we have not been disappointed in our disappointment this year. After that exciting music video Malta published, how could we end up with block colors? What happened here? Where's the creativity? Where's the playfulness? Where are the male dancers on heels? And for that reason, Malta does not deserve more than 2.5 out of 5 possible points. When it comes to the overall song as a live performance, again 4.5 out of 5 possible points. Because this song is a freaking banger. You can sing, you can dance and you really can enjoy the show. Well done for placing in the top 10 of this competition, but I think we all know this could have been better. Moving on to Finland with their solid rock performance. So everybody, middle fingers up and join the dark side. Vocally, Finland deserves 4 out of 5 possible points. For the genre, the vocals were on point. There were a few little moments where they weren't, but overall a very solid vocal performance. From a staging perspective, again, 4 out of 5 possible points. It was a very solid and very elevated rock and roll stage. The amount of fire was just crazy and the camera movements and camera angles were actually really nice and really well planned. The song overall as a live performance deserves a solid 4.5 out of 5 possible points. So Finland, kudos and congratulations to your well-deserved spot in the top 10 this year. Moving on to Ukraine. As I previously mentioned, this is a song which needs to grow on you. But when it does, oh boy, getting better and better. And the audience seems to love it as well. I mean, they placed second in the audience vote. Vocally, I would like to give Ukraine 4 out of 5 possible points. Because even though the vocals can be a bit challenging if you're not used to that kind of singing, she nailed it. From a staging perspective, I would like to give Ukraine 3.5 out of 5 possible points. The staging was solid, the little fake forest was kind of cute, sometimes there seemed to be a bit of a disconnect to what happened in the background, to what happened in the foreground, but overall it was a very solid staging. The song overall as a live performance deserves 4 out of 5 possible points for me. Because again, it makes you want to move, it makes you dance, it makes you want to rave, it makes you want to party. It's a really great song for a live scenario. So Ukraine, congratulations, top 5, well done. Which brings us to Iceland. I am so heartbroken that they were not able to perform their song live in front of a huge audience. If they would have performed live, they might have changed up the voting quite a bit. So again, we can only judge that rehearsal, which lucky for us, they took very seriously. Vocally, Iceland deserves a solid 4 out of 5 possible points. Mainly because Dathi and his background singers blended together beautifully. From a staging perspective, this is my winner of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. 5 out of 5 possible points. Epic background graphics, epic dance, epic outfits, epic circled keyboard solos. This was perfect. And the overall song in a live scenario deserves 4.5 out of 5 possible points. People can sing, people can dance, people can just have a really great time with this song live on stage. So Iceland, a well-deserved spot in the top 5 this year. Which brings us to the final three countries of this grand final of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. Switzerland, France and Italy. Let's start with number three, Switzerland. 
Vocally, this was the best performance of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. 5 out of 5 possible points. He hit every note. The vocal range is absolutely amazing. And there was a lot of passion in his voice as well. So, well deserved 5 out of 5 possible points. Which brings us to the staging. Here, Switzerland, I'm so sorry to say that, and this might have cost you your win, 2 out of 5 possible points. There was no connection whatsoever of the staging and the song. I already mentioned that in my reaction of the second semi-final. What is this staging? Why is he moving his arms in front of white concrete blocks? And why were there the same graphic elements as in Sweden's staging? Is it because it was the same person who was responsible for staging? Hmm. Is it because this person was responsible for other disappointing stagings this year? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. And that staging also brings down the overall rating of this song as a live performance. 3.5 out of 5 possible points. Because as the audience you want to go somewhere but you just can't. Moving on to the second place of this grand final of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest, France. Voila is a beautiful song. Vocally, Barbara deserved a very solid 4.5 out of 5 possible points. There was so much passion in her voice. It was really, really beautiful to listen to. And, just like Switzerland, the French language really helped carrying this song. From a staging perspective, I would like to give France 4 out of 5 possible points. The staging suits the song. The song doesn't require anything else. It doesn't require flashy background graphics or strobe LED lighting. And I'm really glad that France actually went for that and kept it simple. Having said that, during the final seconds of the performance, when Barbara had her camera person directly in front of her and moving back and forth and hands movement and so on, on television it felt a bit invasive. It felt a bit extreme. The song rating overall, from a live performance point of view, also deserves a very solid 3.5 out of 5 possible points. Just like Switzerland and others, it invites you to relax, stand, take a step back and actually enjoy the show. And obviously, because of the choice of music, it doesn't really keep you on your feet. But overall, France, a well-deserved second place in this Eurovision's Grand Final. Well done. Which brings us to the winner of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest, Bella Italia. My goodness, that was a show. And the folks definitely showed us that rock and roll will never die. Vocally, I would like to give this performance 4 out of 5 points. Obviously, singing in this range is very straining on your vocal cords. And especially towards the end of the performance, one could hear that singing this song over and over again in rehearsals and whatnot slowly starts getting to you. The part of the song which impresses me the most is the rapping part. Yeah, Natalia, it's great that you can hold a single note for 17 seconds, but have you ever tried rapping a whole essay on one breath? Actually two breaths, to be very fair here. Anyways, a very skilled vocal performance, four deserved points, well done. When it comes to staging, I would like to give Italy a solid 4.5 out of 5 points. The reason here, I just found Iceland a bit more impressive. But I like the background graphics, I like the fire and I liked their movement overall on stage. It was really impressive. Which brings us to the overall song rating as a live performance. Italy, 5 out of 5 possible points. This was just perfect. So, thank you so much for your performance and congratulations on your well-deserved win. I can't wait to see you guys on tour. So, this was my review of the grand final of the Eurovision 2021 Song Contest. Whew, that was a long one, wasn't it? Anyways, if you liked this video, please give me a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. There are a lot more exciting videos coming up. Ding that notification bell if you want to get notified the next time I upload one of these videos. And if you want to support me and this channel any further, please support me on buymeacoffee.com slash bencristina. There is a link in the description below. If you have any comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Let's have a nice discussion about this and I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next one. All the best. Bye bye. Ben, <gasps> 
to your vision.